hopefully there are some people on. Uh, welcome to uh, Lovecraft Cocktails does another Corin Tiki session. So what I'm going to do is uh, sort of a blast from the past. Um, three, four years ago, we started throwing the occasional tiki party at our place. And so we're going to do just a few drinks that I put on the menu for that very first tiki party. Um, note to anybody that's planning on doing a tiki party. For your first tiki party, don't put 12 different drinks on the menu. That's way, way too much. So um, I did 12 and let people order whatever they wanted from those 12. Uh, I would have been better served by doing three or four or something along those lines. But uh, let's go ahead and do some of those drinks. Uh, I'm going to start with one that is actually more of what you would consider sort of a beach drink rather than a true classic tiki drink. Um, and that is one of Star's favorites, which is a Bahama Mama. All right, so what are and we- And Carrie says hi. Carrie says hi. And Carrie says hi. Excellent. All right, so Bahama Mama. Uh, what we're going to do is, uh, this is actually a drink. So I'm going to take and start with a mixing tin, because I'm going to do this over a spindle blender. And we're going to start measuring our contents in this, and then we're going to add some ice, and we're going to blend it. First up, we have half an ounce of Malibu. Yes, I have Malibu on my bar. Star really likes coconut rum. So here we go. So we're gonna do half ounce Malibu. Sush, there you go. Now we need to kick this up a notch and have a little better quality rum than that. <laughs> so uh, what we're gonna do is this, and this rum, is actually um, from what I call my infinity bottle. So as I get down to the dregs on various other bottles of rum, I just dump them in here and we have this continuous mix of rum going on, which makes for some really interesting flavors uh, of, uh, for, cocktail, for use in cocktails. Because you never know quite how that flavor is gonna change over time. All right, what else goes in this? Grenadine, I've got grenadine right here. So this is, um, not homemade grenadine. This is grenadine from uh, Jack Ruby grenadine. Um, I quite like it. It's still relatively easy to get. Um, and it's nice and it's a dark color. It's very tart and pomegranate-y, um, much unlike the high fructose corn syrup sorts of grenadines from Roses or other places. So we got a half ounce of this. And yes, I have a, a recipe over here to my left, which is what I keep glancing over to. Uh, that's the other thing about doing cocktail parties. Uh, if you're going to be making cocktails and fairly large numbers of different types of cocktails, have a recipe list here so that you don't get off track and start mixing things that shouldn't be in the drinks, keeping the proportions right and that sort of thing. You've got more hellos. You've Excellent. got David and Chris from Molly. Hey, David and Chris, I've living the boat life. Got Amanda and Jennifer. One ounce. Fresh squeezed orange juice. Hello, Amanda and Jennifer. And Brooke and Andre. And Brooke and Andre, great. And then we have an ounce of pineapple juice. This is one of those really easy quaffing drinks, which I think is part of why Star likes it. There's only about a full ounce of rum in here, um, and there's several ounces of fruit juice, so you can knock any number of these over an evening still be doing fine uh, that's why they're especially good on a beach when you're already feeling dehydrated they're not too bad they're actually a hydrating cocktail uh, little over little over a cup of ice maybe in there crushed ice Reach over here spindle blender I need a paper towel. Do, do, do. Always wipe off your spindle, otherwise you're going to make a mess on your counter as it drips all over the place. So that's all nice and blended and kind of frothy, so we're going to just throw that in a glass. Do, 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 do. Here we go. Look at that. All right. Perfection there. Uh, need to decorate this something, so we're going to go 
It's got pineapple in it, so we're going to do a nice little pineapple guy there. How about a sprig of mint? Do I've got some of that lying around here somewhere. Wait, no, 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 better, even better. How about this? So we've got some dried pineapple on a little skewer that looks, well, it's supposed to look like a palm tree, but sometimes these get a little more tentacly looking and kind of, you know, Cthulhu rising out of the mists or something. Toss a straw into that. And one Bahama Mama for my sweetheart. There you go. Linda Elfcoin? Linda, awesome. Glad to hear you. So that's drink number one, Bahama Mama. Easy breezy. Uh, if you don't have a spindle blender, you can just toss it in a normal blender, normal household blender, which is in fact probably what I should have done with this. But there is a limited amount of uh, table space here. So that's all we're gonna do. I'm gonna step off camera for just a sec. Yep, 12 people watching. I got 12 people watching. That's better than three. I think that's excellent. Belinda Jamison. All right, Belinda, hey, how you doing? Oh, and you gotta explain the incense again. I have to explain the incense. Okay, so apparently there is smoke rising and people might be thinking that my bar is on fire, like something happened and I spilled 151 all over the place and things are burning. It's actually just incense that's sitting here and, and wafting up, and that's why there's smoke tendrils coming up. So the bar is not burning down. It's all good. There will be no emergency evacuation, at least not for this. We've got a Maggie. Maggie, hey. And Amanda wants to know if you deliver. Um, I don't. Uh, if you were to stop by, I could probably put something on the front porch. <laughs> We could do a no contact switch up, something along those lines. So, how about you, Mama? It's all right? It's okay? That's so yummy. Good. Excellent. All right, next up, we are going with the Tiki Classic. Megan wants to know when you're going to light a drink on fire. Uh, whenever? <laughs> I could light the uh, planter's punch on fire. We could do that. That's, that's actually really easy to do. Um, don't use your good rum for that. That's, that's silly. Uh, and it doesn't really burn particularly well either. So we'll let you in on the little secret for uh, how to get a nice tall flame coming off of your drink. But in order to put a drink to burn in, I gotta have a drink. So planter's punch. Um, how to explain the planter's, planter's punch. Well, I think the easiest way to explain that is... Let's see if this will work. Where is my camera? My camera's over there. Can you see that? Closer in. Bring it in. Bring it in. There right there. Can you read that? All right, so that is uh, one of my custom pins. My beloved uh, sweetie decided, you know, I could get you business cards that had Lovecraft cocktails on them, but why don't I get you a button instead? How does this relate to the Planter's Punch? Well, Planter's Punch is based upon the recipe that's on my buttons. Nice little mnemonic. So one part sour, we're going to use lime juice for that. Two parts sweet, we're going to use a two to one Demerara syrup. Actually, we're going to use a spiced syrup to kick it up a little bit. Three parts strong rum, duh, and four weak. Uh, in this case, we're just going to go with the dilution off of the ice in order to get four parts of weak. All right, so how do we do this? We're going to do the same thing. We're going to start with a mixing tin. Bada bing. One ounce of lime juice. Lime. Very important. Very important. Label your bottles. <laughs> um, Many is the time I have reached for something and gone, wait, did, is that the lemon or the lime? And when you're pouring a bunch of drinks, you don't have time to be doing that. So, okay, lime juice. Oh, and you can thank Megan for the white. Fresh squeezed. White pen. Uh, by the way, so you'll note that my bottles are labeled with uh, blue painter's tape because it's easy on, easy off. Uh, and I use a white uh, Sharpie for that and that hint comes from uh, Megan who I think is actually watching me at the moment 
Um, that shows up much better, especially in low light conditions than uh, the black Sharpie on things. So label your bottles, label them with a white Sharpie if you really want to be able to see them. There okay. You go. So that's um, one shot of lime. So I need two of sweet, which in this case, because I'm using a two to one syrup, I'm only going to use one ounce of that. Got it? So if I did two ounces of this syrup, it would be really, really sweet. We don't want to do that. So one ounce, but that's two parts sweet. I know, tricky, tricky. I'm going to cheat and go slightly over the sweet end of things by adding just a dash. Wait, Megan's on. Never mind. Megan's on. We'll use Cotton and Reed's Allspice Dram to do a dash of this. Somewhere along the lines, I have a dropper. We're just going to do just a dash there. Adds a little spice to this. Three ounces of rum. Uh, da, da, da. The rum I want to use is not here. Oh my goodness. All right. Um, stepping away again. Mine too, uh, oh. She's gonna what? I was gonna show your rum collection. Well, we could do that. So the Planner's Punch, we're gonna use a Jamaican rum. Appleton is a great Jamaican rum. 12 year, goes right here. Nope, there's a second bottle right there so I don't run out. So this is the rum collection. Um, it doesn't necessarily look like it. There's about 90 rums here because I'm a dweeb. All right, so we need three ounces of this. I'm going to hope there's three ounces left in this bottle. There's one. Other side of the jigger is in fact two ounces. There we go, three ounces of rum. I can go over here. Now we need ice in that. Crushed ice again, because we're going to blend this. Take one scoop. I want just a little more ice than that this time. I need a little more dilution. Close that up. Uh, third trick, I think that's third. Um, crush your ice ahead of time or buy crushed ice ahead of time. Uh, I've tried to crush ice in the midst of a party. Yeah, it slows things down just a tad. All right. That's what, four or five seconds? That's probably about right. Here we're not trying to get it all slushy and foamy. We're just trying to aerate it, put a little, little bit of foam on there. All right, so one planter's punch. What are we gonna use for a mug? We're gonna use, why are we gonna use this guy? Because, well, I want to, but more importantly, if you can see that on the back there, this is the custom tiki mug that we had for our second anniversary. And it's got the anniversary party info on the back end. Thank you, lovely. All right, so we have the classic one sour lime juice, two sweet, a spiced demerara syrup, three strong, that's Jamaican rum, and four of dilution from the crushed ice. And then some people add a couple of dashes of sweet. I got that with the allspice ram, courtesy of Cotton and Reed, who does a wonderful job there. And if you end up just not quite getting where you need to be in the glass, good thing to do for presentation, just tack on a little more crushed ice to the top of that. Do -do 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 -do. There we go. Nice and furry. All right, now we said something about lighting things on fire. All right, so how do we light things on fire? Well, very carefully. We need a fire stick. There's my fire stick. All right. Uh, husk of lime. Good thing to start with. In that husk of lime, we're going to take one sugar cube. Sugar cube. Set that in there. Do, do, do. Now, normally you would soak this sugar cube in like 
or something in order to get the effects that you want. Nah. What we're gonna do is use good old pure lemon extract. I know, lemon extract? What the heck? What are you talking about here, Fooch? Trust me on this. Bartender secret. Do a few drops of that on our little sugar cube. Close that up. We're gonna set this guy right here. Fuego! Up. We're gonna try. We're gonna try to go the Fuego. Can we get some light? This is television, folks, right? Ha! Flames! And there we go. There is flame coming off of that guy, right? How about that? Can you see that? Nice flames, flames. If you want to add just a little bit to that, you can shake a little cinnamon on it and it sparks a little and adds a little bit of spice to the drink. Stick a, stick a, stick a, stick a straw in that. Caution whoever is drinking it to not do so until the uh, flames have burned out. I'm going to stick some mint in there. Try not to burn your fingers when you do that. Uh, you're also using actually very little of the uh, lemon extract, so if it happens to fall into the drink, not a big deal. Ta-da! We have one planter's punch. And that same basic recipe that's sitting on the button you can use that any number of different ways, using different rums, uh, using different types of sour and different types of sweet. And when this is burned out, like it almost has, uh, there's just sort of a burned sugar cube in the bottom there. <laughs> oh, that's tasty. Cheers. Everybody still with me? Hopefully nobody's bored. We're doing okay. My trusty technician who's now working on her second drink, yes. <laughs> Any questions out there? This is this is the room for pausing. Got an error loading, so I think I'm still we're still live, but oh, I'm just not oh. getting it on my device. Okay. So hopefully you're still with us, that uh, my technician says that there may be an error, but we will see. All right, third drink. Uh, and if you're still with me, we might do a variation on this one. Uh, the third drink, it was really simple. So I wasn't a complete idiot when I put 12 different cocktails on this first menu. I had a few that were just really pretty simple, just a few ingredients, and uh, in this case, all of the ingredients go in uh, in perfect measure, meaning each one of them is exactly the same amount. So one part, one part, one part, one part. So how are we going to do that? So this is a shrunken skull. Now the nice thing about the shrunken skull is that I happen to have skull mugs to put the shrunken skulls in. So we're going to start with the shrunken skull sitting right there. Now this is a shaken drink as opposed to a blended drink. So I'm going to go ahead and start with a cocktail shaker. And here we go. So once again, we are going to start with one ounce of lime juice. Do. One ounce of lime juice. I know at some point I'm going to do this and I'm going to knock over the container and everything is going to go all over the place. Not tonight, let's hope. All right, next up, we are going to do a full ounce of grenadine. Now I did change this up on the original party and uh, instead of just doing an ounce of grenadine, what I did is a half ounce of grenadine. There's a half ounce of grenadine. And I wanted to kick this up just a tad, so I also did a half ounce of pama, pomegranate liqueur. Since grenadine is pomegranate, I thought, hey, pomegranate liqueur should suffice. But, uh, Alright, so we got one ounce of lime, one ounce of pomegranate-y stuff, and one ounce of a uh, sort of a clean but slightly aged co um, column still rum. In this case, um, I'm going with Angostura, 
1919, just because I really like it. Um, so we're going to do a full ounce of that. Fourth ingredient, uh, there should be uh, what's going to be a float on top of this uh, of a higher proof rum. And in this case, what I'm going to use is uh, Hamilton's Ministry of Rum 151. So we're going to do a full ounce of that as a float on top. One ounce. Oh, let's see, I've given uh, three tips so far? Yep. I All right, so. so fourth tip. Tell one of your loved ones that is going to be drinking your cocktails that if they really want cocktails from you, they should get you speed pourers for your bottles. Trying to do this freehand uh, from the bottle, my very first party, it was messy all over the place. I also didn't have bartender's mats down, so this whole table was just sticky and a mess. And, Icky. All right, uh, now we're going to go ice, and since we are doing, uh, we're just going to throw this back and forth. Um, I'm going to use just cubed ice. Some cubed ice in there. Close that. Put this in here. Down. Shake. Some dilution by breaking up that ice. Here we're just going to go right into the glass. And then I'm actually going to top that with a little crushed ice. Oh yeah, that's looking pretty. And we're going to do a little garnish because Shrunken Skull has to have a skull on top of it. All right, there you go. Drop a straw in there. Easy peasy. Shrunken skull. One part lime, one part rum. Oh, did I forget? I did. Ha ha. Better drop this guy right there. There you go. One part rum, one part lime, one part uh, uh, Demerara syrup. I'm, uh, oh, excuse me, one part grenadine. Scratch that. One part lime, one part grenadine, one part column steel rum, and then a float of a 151 on top of it. There you go. Shrunken skull. All right. You do have a request from Ed Langdon. Mm -hmm. How about a slick whiskey sour when you have a moment? A slick whiskey sour? Well, I can do a whiskey sour. I'm not sure what a uh, slick whiskey sour would be. Can do that though. That's easy enough. Um, do I have lemon? I do not have lemon. So um, the neat thing about whiskey sours is uh, they come from the family of sours, which is <laughs> unsurprising. And for all of those drinks, the proportions of sweet and sour can be done a little bit to taste. Uh, my preferred percentages. Uh, is two parts of whiskey, uh, three quarter part or three quarter ounce, uh, so two ounces whiskey, three quarter ounce of your sour and three quarter ounce of your sweet. Um, now that's not to everybody's liking, but that's kind of how I like to do uh, the sours. So um, at the bar right here, I don't have any whiskey, so I'm gonna have to gravitate to the back room and go grab some whiskey, so I'll be right back. So you'll notice the uh, shrunken skull stayed up here. So I have to come up here to try it. Uh, 
good friend of mine, neighbor across the way, uh, gifted me with a bottle of Macaulay's uh, bourbon whiskey. And so that's what we're going to use for this. Um, I am going to go ahead and shake this one. Uh, you can do it since there's going to be tart juice in it, different viscosity. I think shaking it makes a better drink in this case. So first of all, I need to be able to squeeze this so that I can get some lemon juice. Oh, that lemon's a little big. Let's cut this down. You're making me go off book here. So it may take a little longer. That's what you get for going live. That's what I get for going live. Yep, indeed. Rinse that out. Uh, you probably want to strain your uh, juice and somewhere around here. Aha, uh -huh. one strainer. Ta da, strainer. That's so not going to work, is it? Do you need a. We got it covered. Ta da. All right, so we're going to have to go with uh, three quarters lemon juice here. And for sours, I really like using lemon instead of uh, lime. I think it just works a little better. I, in both cases, you're getting tartness. But uh, I really think the lemon is slightly tartar up front and then fades faster and gives you a clearer picture of whatever the spirit is that's in the drink. Um, unless you think that I stumbled across this and I'm some brilliant cocktail genius. No, it's just because I read Liquid Intelligence, which is a phenomenal book about cocktails, cocktail making, and spirits. All right, how are we doing? Let's, uh... What do you know? Three quarters of an ounce. Perfect. Choom. Three quarters of an ounce. Two ounces Macaulay's. Missing the three quarter ounce of sweet, and what I have is demerara syrup. So, demerara syrup is just simply a simple syrup, but it is made with demerara sugar, which is a little less refined, has a little more molasses flavor to it. It's going to uh, add some interesting notes to a whiskey sour, so we'll see. Ice. Ice. Shake this puppy. I'm not a pro. I don't do this for a living. I don't do this enough that I feel comfortable doing one handed shakes. You know those shake, 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 shake. shake, shake. Great stuff, except that, well, I would get things everywhere. There we that go. For Ed. This is for Ed. Drop a straw in that. Uh, you know what? I like a little tiny bit of bitters with mine. It's not traditional. Here we're going to go one, two drops from uh, Embitterment Bitters. This is their Japanese Iki, Iki uh, Bitters. Let's start right there. Ed, got to test this, see how it is. Oh, that's, that's kind of nice. Yeah, kind of nice. No rum in it. Still kind of nice. Excellent. Maggie says pretty color. It is. It is. All right. What else we got here? So, um. Thanks, Ed. Our <laughs> Ed, you're going to get my wife drunk, or I'm going to get her drunk because I'm making things that people are asking me to make. So the one other thing I was going to do is a variation on the shrunken skull. And the reason I wanted to do that is because while the shrunken skull itself is a very simple cocktail, 
Um, it does lack just a, a little bit in its complexity. And while I was reading up on the Shrunken Skull, because yes, you can read up on individual cocktails uh, in the tiki world, I ran across an article on Atomic Blog. Atomic Blog, I'll put a link in uh, in the comments here uh, after the show. Uh, Atomic Grog does all sorts of great things, uh, all sorts of things tiki related, has a great calendar for tiki related and that sort of thing. Uh, so what they did is they realized that there has been a shrunken skull on the menu at the Mai Kai restaurant in Fort Lauderdale, which is one of these massive tiki meccas. And they set out to recreate that because the classic shrunken skull recipe just isn't quite that. So uh, taking some hints from Atomic Grog, I'm going to do my attempt at a shrunken skull in honor of the Mai Kai restaurant, which someday I will get there. Someday. <laughs> So what are we going to do with this? Uh, we're going to do this the same way we did the original Shrunken Skull in that we're going to do this with a, as a shaken cocktail. So I'm going to go with the same proportion here. We're going to do half Palma. A half ounce of the grenadine. Grenadine, full ounce of the lime, by the way I hope none of you were hoarding things when uh, the down started. I will say that possibly the one thing I did hoard was limes and I had good reason. I'm now down to one last lime, so we're going to have to brave the outer world in order to get more limes. All right, uh, what else am I doing here? I want to do a quarter ounce of allspice dram. You're like, wait, there was no allspice dram in the shrunken skull. There is now. All right, a little bit of that. Here we go three quarters ounce of a spiced demerara syrup. Then we're going to get funky here. So reaching into the bag of tricks, there is a, a, a little bottle sitting on my bar of what is known as Mariana's number seven. So Mariana's the time bartender at the Mai Kai and um, had a number of different syrups and the like behind the bar with numbers so nobody knew what was actually in them. So in this case, what we have is a little um, vanilla syrup uh, combined with uh, a little absinthe, so in equal portions. So it's got kind of a really interesting uh, smell to it. So we're just gonna do a couple of dashes of that in there. It's nice. I've not put any rum in this. Somebody stop me, what am I doing? Again, full ounce. Ding dong. Now ice. Scare the cat when you shake. Although I gotta admit, he's getting used to it, which I think that might be a bad sign. Look, 
It's another skull mug. Ta-da. On the shrunken skull. Hi, all uh, atomic grog. Stick a straw in that. Oh yeah, yeah, definitely the right one. Oh. She's not gonna like it as much as she likes this one. Emo doesn't get any. No, I like that one better. Hey, somebody improves over time. That's, uh, I guess, what we all aim for. So, the Shrunken Skull, a la the uh, first party I, party I ever did. The Shrunken Skull, as I think I will do them in the future. We did a planner's punch. We did a whiskey sour, which I guess gravitated somewhere else. Star, did you wind up with the whiskey? Star wound up with the whiskey sour. And we started off with uh, a Bahamas, Bahama Mama. So also gravitated over there for Star. I, on the other hand, hail hydrate. That's it. That's all I got for you. I hope you've enjoyed this session of being stuck in quarantine with Pooch and Star from Lovecraft Cocktails. Um, I'm going to throw it back to Star and see if there's any questions. Anybody want to uh, ask me anything? Uh, Ed said, ah, the atomic in Vegas. Ah, uh, okay. And uh, Andrea says, love that mug, the white skull. Oh, yeah. yeah That's yeah, a yeah. gift from your mommy. It is, in fact, a gift from my mother. And her husband, Larry, yeah. shout out. Poor Larry, dude loves his tennis, loves his volleyball, loves getting out, and wow, he's stuck inside. So, my shout out to Larry. Uh, something about your tech support person is doing a lot of drinking. Um, that's probably why we're gonna have to shut this down, because when tech support is drinking, uh, they don't handle tech problems particularly well. Oh, we also have a charity and a Mary Winters Myers. Excellent, excellent. Mary Winters Myers um, bar fleet fame. Mm -hmm. Yes. So hopefully I'm living up to the uh, the standards of bar fleet while making these cocktails. Okie doke. Um, I think that's going to be it for me. So signing off. Lovecraft Cocktails says bye bye as long as my tech support can find the appropriate button to shut things off. And as we're doing week. that.